Voices is brought to you by Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, visit squarespace.com and use the offer code MacVoices7. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the Talk of the Mac community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, I'm anxious to have this particular program. I've been trying to get it scheduled now for a little while, but I haven't been able to get it scheduled. Um, and, and as it turns out, we only have a few days left to communicate this. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Jean McDonald. You know her from Smile, but this time she's here representing App Camp for Girls, a project she, she started oh, a little while ago. Jean, it's great to have you back. And Kelly Gumont, uh, who also has been here before. You know her from lots of things, uh, most currently as an angry Mac bastard. <laughs> Seems strange <laughs> to say, Kelly. Um, <laughs> but uh, also as a representative of AppCamp for Girls as well. Great to have you. Thanks so much for having me on. Okay, so let's take this from the top. A lot of our friends, a lot of the folks who are listening to this already know something about App Camp for Girls because uh, if they follow me on Twitter, if they follow Gene on Twitter, if they just are kind of aware of what's going on in the Mac community, they know a little bit about it. But assuming that they don't, Gene, how about if you give us the, uh, the 411 on App Camp for Girls and how it got started and what it is? Sure. Um, well, Hap Camp for Girls is a summer camp program for girls to be introduced to the wonderful, fun world of app development. And uh, in the one-week camp, they learn how to brainstorm, design, uh, code, build, and even pitch their apps. Um, and uh, the idea came to me a couple of years ago when I was at WWDC and having that moment of like, it is kind of ridiculous that I'm practically the only woman in this room um, and when the room has like 2,000 people in it. And <laughs> um, so I, I, um, I'm sure we've talked about this before, but I'm very involved here in Portland with the Rock and Roll Camp for Girls, um, which is a program where girls learn how to play an instrument and write a song and form a band and play a showcase all in one week. So I thought, what if we took those two concepts um, and meld them together and have something that's equally fun, but for girls who want to build apps. And that's was App Camp for Girls. That's where it came from. So basically, it's because you were lonely at WWDC. Well, I wasn't lonely. <laughs> 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 but I was... Um, I, it, it's funny because, it, you know, I've been going to WWDC for a while, but you know how you have that, like, light bulb moment sometimes where you say why hasn't this been bothering me more? And then once you think that, it's bothered. It can't, you can't stop bothering you, you know? And, um, uh, you know, if it, if it hadn't been such a tiny number, I'm used to being, you know, this whole career in software is mostly spent with, with men. Um, so it's, it's not like it bothers me, but I'm, I'm kind of used to it. But if there had been like saving twenty percent women there, I might have. It might not have occurred to me. <laughs> but I believe it's closer to five percent. Or I don't know about this year. I didn't get any any. If I never gotten official numbers um, because Apple doesn't put that out. But um, uh, just unofficially, I had heard that it was about two hundred and fifty women the year before last. So, Kelly, what's your involvement with App Camp for Girls? How did you get involved and how do you feel about this particular project? Well, my experience has been similar to Jean's. I've worked in software for a lot of years and I'm really used to being the only girl. And after Jean brought this up, uh, I it was the same sort of thing. Like once you see it a certain way, you can't ever unsee it. And so last summer, uh, Jean uh, texted me and said, we should have lunch. I have an idea I want to talk to you about. And uh, it, was a, it was a tough sell. There were margaritas involved. And uh, she said, I want to do this thing, you know, rock and roll camp. I want to do that, but with iOS. And I said, that sounds fantastic. I'm not a developer, but tell me what you need that I can do. And I'm there because it just sounded like a great idea. And it sounded like exactly the kind of thing that would have made my life a lot easier if I had had the opportunity to go to something like this. So uh, I really wanted to be a part of doing something for someone else and giving them that opportunity at 
at being exposed to something different because we're getting junior high girls. So to me, the important thing about this is that uh, uh, there's not a lot of of barriers in their way right now. Like in high school, I've talked to a number of people who said when you get a high school when you get to high school girls and you say, "Hey, science is awesome" or "engineering is awesome." At that point, they've already sort of built up this thing in their mind about what a scientist looks like or what an engineer looks like or, you know, what it what it means to be a programmer, and that's not for them. And it's really nice to get the opportunity before those things have been set in stone to sort of give them an opportunity to see that the barrier of entry, particularly for iOS, may not be as high as what they have been led to believe. And it's been really great to have the opportunity to sort of help them and, and show them a different way. And uh, we had all women all week, and it's been really, it was really great to get the chance to uh it was really great to get the chance to have a good discussion with them and to have all women in the room so they could see. Like, there's all sorts of women who contribute in various ways because I'm not a developer. We had some people who are uh, awesome software testers who came and helped us out. We had people who were developers who came and helped us out. Uh, we had a designer come and speak about user interface. And all of those things were all different aspects of contributing to technology without necessarily having to be hunched over a laptop surrounded by empty Mountain Dew cans, like typing <laughs> and grumbling. And so it was really great, you know, after 18 hours. So it was really great <laughs> to have the chance to sort of show that there's a different way that they can do that. And it was great to get the feedback from them like, this is awesome. This is great. This is something I think could be fun, even if it's just on the side, giving giving them an opportunity and making it so Jean and I aren't the only ones anymore. <laughs> that for me was also, it, like, it's a little bit selfish. I want to be at this long enough that enough of the people that we sort of help with AppCamp start showing up at things and, and building awesome applications. Yeah. And, of course, to do this kind of thing takes some cash. So <laughs> you started out with exactly zero dollars, and you launched an Indiegogo project, and you have had really some amazing success. Um, and let's, Gene, how about if you talk about that? Because, of course, none of this can happen without cash. That's true. Um, yeah, of course, especially you want to do something that involves Apple hardware. You know it's not going to come cheap. Um, luckily, we Apple people are used to putting out, you know, know that it takes money uh, to get the best equipment. And the, um, the, um, the, I always wanted to do a crowdfunding campaign from this when, I, when we first started to, you know, to first started to take shape. There was some discussion about whether we would apply for some grants, you know, and get some, you know, multiple thousands of dollars and from um, maybe from a corporation or some other organization. But my feeling was that I believe in this community and I believe that uh, I want everybody who wants to be a part of this to be a part of launching it. You know, I want your five dollars is very important to us. You know, and, and your you know whatever you want to chip in. Uh, what's really exciting is how many people have contributed, um, not just how much money. Which of course the 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 amount of money is also mind blowing, but the the number of people is really really exciting. And I just felt that you know we could. I was sure that we could get enough money to keep the Portland thing afloat through the summer and pay some of the bills that we would have throughout the year um, to keep it going until next summer. But um, I, you know, and I thought I would rather start with my people, you know, our people, and and make them the investors. You know, the original uh, seed round of funding is coming from you know the people who care the most. I think, and who who I care about the most. And so, that's why we did did a a crowdfunding thing. You know, for this summer. Now, um, as you might mention, we we. We're really overwhelmed. Kelly and I are pretty much floored. We could hardly speak when we made fifty thousand dollars in three days. Um, I we didn't expect that at all. Um, and immediately the discussion was, well, the fundraiser goes on no matter what. You don't close it down. You you can't close it down actually. Um, so what would we do um, if we continue to raise money? What would we use the money for? And Immediately it was, we want to bring this awesome program to as many girls as we can in as many places as we can. And 
now instead of just funding Portland plus like the beginnings of a nonprofit organization, we're asking people, okay, let's let's go to hundred thousand, and we know we can add some camps next year when if we have that amount of money. So in other places, not just Portland. And as we record this, I believe you're just under seventy five thousand. Just under seventy five thousand. Just under seventy five. So you still have about twenty five thousand to go, and the Indiegogo campaign closes. Uh, well, you need to get your donations in by July fifteenth. Yes, um, I think the official close date is July sixteenth. But you know, depending on your time zone, you might miss it. So. <laughs> and we don't want you to miss it. So. We don't want you to miss it. We, you know, if you want to be a part of this, you, you know, we want you. We want you to have that. Uh, chance to contribute and and take some of the the credit and the pride and in, in what we're all building together. I have to admit, when you first started it and announced it, you know, I I was going to the Indiegogo page and clicking every so often and seeing how's it going, how's it going, <laughs> and and you hit fifty thousand pretty quickly. You had another very successful, very packed fundraising event at at WWDC. It mm-hmm. had to be a great feeling to go to that event. The, the event that had sort of started this already fully funded. Yeah, it was. I mean, I, uh, it was great. It was also like, wow, you know, <laughs> now what do we do? <laughs> I was going to hit people up in line at WWTC. <laughs> I had this whole plan of how, um, and many, many little bookmarks printed to give out. Um, but Apple uh, let everybody in early <laughs> this year. <laughs> so. My big plan of like hitting the 5,000 people who would be wrapped around the block waiting for two or three or five hours, um, that, that, didn't, that part didn't happen, but we had already raised $50,000, so I didn't feel as stressed out about it as I might have otherwise. Um, yeah, and that, the party was, was really cool because um, that was put on by a organization, uh, it's not even really a, a, a formal organization, but a group that calls themselves WWDC Girls. Um, and last summer, last year at, at WWDC, they put on a brown bag lunch. Um, you know, they said, everybody come across the street to Yerba Buena Park and we'll, uh, all, you know, women will get together. And there was a, maybe like 40 women um, who came to this. And uh, one of them was this young woman who came up to me afterwards. She says, hey, I hear you're from Portland. I, I just moved to Portland. And I said, really? I said, are you a developer? She said, yes. And I said, okay, because I, I need to talk to you. <laughs> and that was Natalie Osten, who's been working also uh, with Kelly, you know, co-organizing the whole project. Um, and she's been our go-to person for all things iOS and technical. And she's really the heart of the program in the sense that without her, we don't have an app development program. We have a lot of fun, <laughs> but we don't have app building. And uh, I'm sorry she couldn't be here today. Um, uh, of course, she's developing apps and she's busy, but um, she uh, that was because of WWDC girls that I even met her. I'm not really sure what would have happened if I hadn't met Natalie, because not only is she really get, a gifted developer and a great person, but she's quite young, you know, like relative to me, right? And I know this is summer camp, and, and these me. are girls. <laughs> really? <laughs> I feel She's, like it. You feel like it, yeah. I mean, she if you don't know, you might think she was a camper. Um, and, and whenever we go out to these, like, margarita lunches, she invariably is carded. Um, but she's a, she's she's a great role model for the girls because she is close to their age. They can relate to her in a way that they don't relate to me. I think they relate well to Kelly. I think that, you know, I don't think of you as being that old Kelly, but um, so that was a key, key piece to have this really um, engaging and inspiring young developer who happened to be a woman. So, so when WWDC girls this year said, we want to put on a cocktail party, um, GitHub is going to sponsor it, and 360 iDev is going to sponsor it, and we want to make it a fundraiser for App Camp for Girls. And it was all them, like, just coming up with the idea. And I just was so excited, you know, to have that kind of full round trip of, of um, th- that, that particular group really made App Camp possible in some 
in some ways by putting us all together at WWDC since we otherwise wouldn't see each other in this sea of men. <laughs> Kelly, Jean mentioned uh, Natalie and iOS. Mm-hmm. Is this focused primarily on app development? You know, the word app has kind of come to mean iPhone, iPad, that kind of thing. Uh, is this strictly basing basic, what you're trying to teach the girls, uh, just iOS, or does it stretch over into the Mac, or is it just everything across the board? Well, we had to start with something specific. Uh, you know, if we wanted them to build an app, um, it it sort of was a no brainer for us to make it something Apple, something iOS, because that was that was our community. There are people and it was something that we could do to get the word out very easily. I know a lot of, of Mac type folk. Jean knows the rest of the Mac type folk. Like collectively we have a lot of people that we can talk to and say, Hey, we're trying to do this thing. Um, what we are trying to do is we do a lot of stuff that would translate well to anything because we do some storyboarding. So what does your app look like? And this could be, this, this is the kind of stuff that doesn't necessarily have to be Apple related. So it could be a Windows app or an Android app or any other kind of, of programming thing. Like you sit down and you kind of draw a sketch of this is what I want it to look like. And when you push this button, this is the screen you get. And when you push this button, this is the screen you get. And you know, working your way through what that would be. And so one of the things that we're giving them is some critical thinking. And if you, you know, what happens if something goes wrong? And, you know, you have to sort of consider what if somebody does something outside of what you want them to do? What if they hit that button over there that they're not supposed to hit? And, you know, being able to think about those kind of things and and the kind of stuff that you, that, you have in an application once you've given it out to people and they're using it however they want to, which may not be how you want them to. Um, giving them some of those skills and and also uh, the skill at the end of the week, we have them stand up and pitch their application to a panel of investors. And so every single girl got up, at least two of them had told me that uh, they'd never done any kind of public speaking before. So... Um, they had the opportunity to stand up in front of like everybody's parents and the panel of investors and the rest of the girls and say, this is our application. This is what it looks like. Here's the pieces. Um, here's what we would do to make money with it. And we kind of gave them some of the other ideas for what they want to do. And um, so part of it was, this was our skill set with Mac OS and iOS. And the other part of it was like, I don't see kids, you know, wishing and writing letters to Santa and drawing pictures of Zunes. Like, kids want something, kids what? want something what, for an what's iPod. That? What's a Zune? Yeah. yeah. Remember those? Um, they want something for an iPod. They want something for an iPod toucher for an iPhone. And so, um, like, that was the rest of what was really interesting about it was like, here's your iPod for the week. Now that we have your attention, here's what we're going to do with it. And it was really great. I mean, for us, like it was also sort of a no brainer for the kids because that's what kid, that's what kids want to be carrying around. It's what they want to be using. And so giving them the opportunity to build something that runs on this thing that you really, really like was also a, a really useful way for us to do it. And I just want to come back to Jean's point for a second about how we were floored by donations. Um, hi, I'm Kelly. I talk like all the time. And I was speechless when we got was funded. Completely like, speechless. Me. I need to underscore that moment because Jean and I were in the car together and I was holding her phone and I was holding my phone at the same time and her phone went off and then my phone went off and it was a message saying, I don't know if you guys saw this, but you just got funded. You're at $50,026 or whatever it was. And I couldn't say anything. And I tend to say all the words and I couldn't say anything. I I love, I really love the fact that not only are you doing the development part and the geek part, but you're also doing the business part and teaching them about, you have to consider how you're going to sell this. You're, you're looking for investors. You're trying to get them to think about how they would make money with the app. Uh, not because any of us are you know, completely greedy, but just that's the world that you're trying to prepare them for. It's not just a pure artistic kind of effort. It's more of a practical thing. And I think that's, that's truly brilliant. One of my uh, favorite parts of the investing in that was that every team had a different idea for how they were going to 
make money out of their app. Every team had a different business model. They all came up with it individually. And like every, t um, I think every team started out with, well, we'll just give it away. And then it was, well, if you give it away, how do you make any money out of it? Oh, and then yeah. so every team had a different answer to that question. And it was great to see what their ideas were and how, yeah. how each team individually decided they would find a way to monetize and, and what their business model was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really something because um, the, the last day, you know, the, the thing, uh, when, as I was like trying to decide how, how would we finish off camp, you know, with a flourish, you know, a, a send them off with a, with, you know, some, some kind of ceremonious something, you know, like you would have a recital or, or at rock and roll camp, we have a showcase in a theater. Um, and I came up with this idea of having a pitch session because that was the thing I could think of that would require them to get up and talk about what they're doing and something that their parents could see, you know, so, and be proud of them as well. And that the pitch session should feature a panel of women investors, because I happen to know a lot of women investors um, in Portland and elsewhere. And so I actually had two investors from San Francisco who flew up just to come to App Camp, plus two women locally who are very well established in the, in the local uh, Portland, um, you know, entrepreneurial investment community. And they took it completely seriously. And they gave them amazing feedback and, you know, pushed them with their ideas. And actually, you know, they were giving them suggestions that I was thinking like, I, I never thought of that. <laughs> that could be very lucrative. <laughs> so, it, it, for, for me and Kelly, it was kind of like a free, uh, free business advice session too. <laughs> we had, we got uh, a lot out of it as well. And uh, the girls just were, it was super, you know, they, they, they could show off what they had done and, um, and get, taken seriously, which is a, another thing that the camp is about, is that we give you an iPod touch to keep for the whole week. And we don't like say, give it back to us at breaks or give it back to us at the end of the day. You must hold on to this and please don't lose it. And I'm proud to report that none of them lost their iPod touches. Um, we let them, you know, the place where we held the camp is a pretty cool old building, part of it which has been turned into this big coffee house. And the girls, when they had, you know, non-activity time, would say, can we go sit in the coffee house? We'd say, sure, you know, and they would go with their groups and go to the coffee shop, which is lit. Well, you know, grown-up developers do when they want to yeah. kick back and get out of, you know, get their heads clear. So, um, more than one girl remarked to me, she says, I really like how you treat us like, you know, we're responsible. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be clear on this, too, that that while the fundraiser is going on in App Camp for Girls is something that's going to move ahead, what we've been talking about here is a beta version of App Camp that you ran I guess to test the project, find out, you know, yeah. how it works. Well, I mean, for us, beta meant we're not charging for it, you know, and we we know that it's it's not a finished product because we've never done it before and neither has anybody else. We have nothing to go by. And I just didn't feel comfortable selling it as a, a summer program for parents to pay for when we weren't really sure how it was going to turn out. That would have been too much pressure, um, I think. <laughs> you know, like every day I'd be thinking like, are they going to all ask for their money back? You know, are they going to, the kids, what are the kids saying at home? Like, are the parents going to demand refunds? But I mean, not the, the, in fact, all the girls were super, super happy at the end of the week. And um, I got the, the surveys, you know, which 100%, I said, would you recommend this to a friend? And they said, yes, absolutely. You know, and what, um, and they liked pretty much most of what we did. I mean, considering it's a group of 12, um, you know, the 12 to 14 year olds um, the fact that we uh, managed to make them all happy I feel that's an accomplishment right there in itself <laughs> this edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Squarespace the beautiful and intuitive website platform that allows anyone to create professional web pages blogs online stores galleries and more in a simple intuitive interface Last time we talked, I told you about some of the things you get with the Squarespace site. Things like customization, social media links, 
and easy image resizing and management. This time, let's talk about some of the other features, like the many features your site can contain. Galleries, blogs, calendars, pages, all of these are included in every Squarespace site. Just decide you want one or more, and there it is for you, ready for your content. And let's not forget your Squarespace site will look great on any device, because it automatically scales to that device. iPhone, iPad, Mac, PC, Android tablet, you name it and your site automatically adjusts to give the user the best experience possible. Squarespace is designed so that you don't have to know or even look at a line of code. But if you want to poke around under the hood, Squarespace gives you access so that you can use custom CSS if that's what you're into. So much more to go, but for now, that should give you even more incentive to go to squarespace.com and use the offer code MACVOICES7 to get 10% off your first order. Or try them out for 14 days free, then go back and make your site your own and get 10% off with the code MACVOICES7. Squarespace. Everything you need to create an exceptional website. Thanks to Squarespace for supporting this edition of Mac Voices. And, and how many girls participated in, again, the, the, the first App Camp or the beta version of App Camp? That was um, 12. 12. So you had 12, 12 girls, what, three to a team, four to a team? Four, four to a team. Four to a mm -hmm. team. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. Do you mind if we ask what kind of apps they were they were developing, or is that a secret and we're not allowed to talk about it? Yes, secret, no. <laughs> so secret. It was on the news, Chuck. We were on the local news, and the local <laughs> reporter actually did use, play with all of their apps on really? camera. Yeah. Um, the uh, So it's not a secret, that's what I'm, I'm trying to say, is that we already have been, the cat's out of the bag. Um, what we did is um, Natalie put together a bare bones um, Xcode project that was a quiz, a generic quiz with five questions, each question with four answers, um, and then a results, you know, page. But the girls came up with all the content, did all the artwork, and they they figured out how to grade the quiz and how they how the results would be calculated, um, which was was a feat in its in its own right. So they each took the project as like, you know, to make a kind of a personality quiz um, and one group and each group had different interests it was they were completely different these these quizzes one one group had uh, one of their members was obsessed with penguins and she liked to draw penguins and so they decided to make up the penguin quiz and the penguin quiz is what kind of penguin are you um, you answer the questions about like what would you have in your house or what kind of hat would you wear or what kind of TV show would you be watching and the answers would um, determine whether you were a nerdy penguin, a diva penguin, a lazy penguin or a sporty penguin. Each of the girls like came up with a personality and they they keyed in you know answers to make that um, uh, that make those results happen and. Uh, most ninety five percent of the people who taken the penguin quiz, at least on my iPhone, have been nerdy penguins. No big surprise there. Yeah, it's your iPhone, um, Gene. Come on. Yeah. Well, this I mean, one of the questions <laughs> is like, "What's your favorite TV show?" or "What TV show would you be watching?" And one of the answers choices is Star Trek. So, and I think if you answer Star Trek, you're automatically a nerdy penguin. Um, but the TV reporter, she was a diva penguin, which I loved that. So. <laughs> And she loved it too. It was like you know what well, they um, uh, another group had like this really interesting take um, where they decided that what you like to eat for breakfast says a lot about your personality. And so it was almost like placing a breakfast order. You know, it's like how would you eat your you know how would you like your eggs to be cooked? What would you drink? You know, what would you what do you like? You know, French toast or waffles? Um, and the answers for that determined like uh, what personality type you were, whether you were, you know, you're laid back and easygoing or you're organized. Like if you ordered waffles, I'm pretty sure then you'd be, you got um, the result that you were organized because you like things in a grid, right? Um, they uh, squares for squares for syrup distribution, I think was the phrase that was used. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, um, and, and the results of that quiz, like if you took that quiz, they were uncannily, 
accurate. Um, and mine was like, you like things your own way. <laughs> You're something of a perfectionist, but that's cool. Then hashtag Coolio perfectionist. And that was like, they're so fun. They're so creative. And, you know, they're not restrained by the, you know, kind of, you know, business or other design considerations that you would have, like, um, if you were a business putting an app together. And yet they end up being maybe more marketable because it's so fresh. And so fun. So, uh, so those are that. And the the last group they did a quiz based on Greek mythology. They're very into the Greek gods, and so they had a um, quiz that would help you if you were a Greek god. Which god would you be? So, um, which god? And that did, was Ke- that was Kelly's group. That was oh, yeah. Oh, which yeah, god? Kelly, you, what god did you guys come out as? I don't know if I took that quiz. Um. I'm trying to remember which one I came up with. It was uh, wisdom and libraries and books. Yes, Athena was I got Athena. That. Yeah, okay. but yeah. it could be Athena or Poseidon or Hermes or Hermes or, or Artemis. Artemis, and it was great to see how different all the quizzes were, knowing that they all started with the same basic structure. So even knowing, you know, knowing that they all started from the same place, to see how greatly. Um, varied they were and all the differences in in the art in the questions in the answers in the results it was really phenomenal to see that how wide a variety of things we could get out of this one little kernel of starting out yeah this is this is such a great idea and it I, the impression I've gotten, Gene, from following the the Twitter feeds for for you and mm-hmm. for Abcam for Girls, there's there's a hunger out there for this. There's a real need for this, and and maybe more important, a desire for for the from the girls of that of those age groups to yeah. get involved in this. Where I I think um, I'm trying to remember who who wrote up the article, but in, in environments that weren't boy heavy, I think was the yes. phrase. Oh yeah, Monique wrote that. Um, she was on the Investor panel. Um, she's herself an app developer. Um, she she created an app called Speak Chic, and it's basically a guide to all the pronunciations of names of designers. Um, and it's quite an elaborate app. If you, uh, I think it's two dollars on the App Store. It's a really good idea. It's. Um, um, anyway, she came up from San Francisco. Uh, she, she's a colleague, or I guess my sister met her at TED this year, and that's how they became buddies. And um, so she wrote, yeah, the girls said, like, the environments can be boy heavy, which is very true. Um, the classes or the other kinds of, you know, activities that they could get involved in, even, you know, Lego Robotics League is very popular here. Um, and girls do it, but vast majority of the teams are boys and um they really appreciate it having a week just to spend with girls um and make friends you know because they're still at that age where the chances of them becoming best friends with a bunch of boys is slim (laughs) and uh, and and also it's that's a potentially awkward age to for that kind of interaction and the kind of partnership that you probably want in in app developers yeah yeah and i mean it's it's pretty well established how much that girls do better in single sex educational environments because they don't feel the need to restrain themselves you know or try not to show off or try you know that they don't need to see space physically or or mentally or vocally to boys who might be more outspoken or more assertive. They And so, uh, definitely in this case, I think it was a great thing. Um, in the TV segment, they interviewed one of our campers, um, one of the younger ones, and she was so... Um, she was so eloquent. I was kind of surprised, you know, because we spent. I knew she could talk because she was. One, she was definitely one of one of our, our chatty campers. But she, she, very deep thought about. She said, "People think that this is something that only boys are really interested in. You know, that people think only boys want to be programmers, and it's not true. That's right. So, you know, they just they got had a chance to express themselves in a way that." in an environment where they felt completely, you know, supported um, 
we wanted them to be as creative as possible. All the staff, the volunteer staff is all women and um, uh, they were great. It was really amazing, amazing week. So it sounds like the only time that any, any men came in or male, so I'll do that was, was for the investor part or was that all women as well? It was all women investors. All women? Okay, so yeah. only the only the fathers, I guess. Were the, the dads. Only. Okay. <laughs> My brother came and helped us pack out stuff. Uh, we, we we do have quite a few male, um, you know, enthusiasts and evangelists for the camp. Um, actually, our video producer is also, he's a guy. I told him, I said, you know, when you come to shoot video, you're going to be the only guy in the room. Um, and it actually worked out kind of good because the girls at this point were – just able to tune him out, you know, <laughs> they didn't interact with him at all. And uh, he could take a lot of video without worrying about them looking at the camera. Um, we uh, have worked with, um, obviously, we know lots and lots of male developers and who, and we're, who we really like and we, I, you know, who have offered to help us and, you know, would be happy to teach if we, we, uh, uh, change the structure of the camp. But in the meantime, they're helping us um, by helping us flesh out these app ideas that we can use for the girls to learn stuff. So the more ideas like the quiz that we can bring in and have the girls work from, you know, we give them more opportunities to um, make things their own and be proud of what they've done. So so there's there's quite a few guys who have been super helpful in that regard. Um, and, uh, you know, and in general, just getting the word out and donating money. I mean, I'm pretty sure if I went through the spreadsheet of, of contributors, I'd find like more than half the money comes from men. <laughs> so <laughs> we appreciate it, you know, and, and, and I appreciate that people understand that there's, there's something special about having being able to see women do something and say, hey, I could do that too. Um, and if we were to bring in guys to teach the programming, I think it would send the wrong message, basically, that there's we have to bring in the guys to do the hard part, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. It, it, it's unfortunate, but it's at least for now the reality. And so this is one more way to change that, that reality. And, yeah. and I think that is very important. And that's probably one of the reasons it's been so successful. Yeah. Let's talk about moving forward, though, and, and going forward. We, we mentioned that the, the Indiegogo closes on July 15th, 16th, but depending on time mm -hmm. zones. So that's the first way that folks can support it. In the event they want to donate money or assistance or whatever, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you or the powers that be after <laughs> the Indigo, Indiegogo is over? Um, well, they can definitely email me, um, at, at Jean at appcamp 4 girls and dot com, appcamp 4 girls dot com, and the four is the number four. Um, and, or if you go to our website, um, my my email address is right there. Um, but you know, there's a lot more. I mean, we'll, we'll definitely be able to use funds that come in after the Indiegogo is over. We'll also we'll always be looking for more women iOS developers and anybody who, who knows a woman who, who ships iOS apps, like please put her in touch with us. Um, and another way, you know, we could, we could also use donations of, of MacBook pros. <laughs> if somebody's upgrading and has a 15 inch MacBook pro, they'd like to, uh, to um, hand off. That's what we learned last week in our beta session that, we need one computer for every two girls, and it needs to be a 15 inch. It can't be a 13 inch, and so that's what that's what, what that was the beta part of beta camp is that we'd find things out like that. Right. So right. so money, women developers, and um, MacBook Pros. I think we'll continue to buy the the iPod Touches new because we want to keep a set that's uniform. Um, that we can and and we can provision so that they work and we can load the programs from Xcode onto them and I don't have to provision new iPods every camp session, um, so that that's that's an expense right there because those are two hundred and thirty dollars a piece now um, for the sixteen gig iPod Touch. 
Right. What's the what is the real app camp? <laughs> <laughs> not the beta version, but the real app game. What do you plan on charging uh, for that per girl? That's going to be $300 per girl. But we will work with people who can't afford that to make it possible for them to come. So we don't, you know, our our mission is to, to help as many girls as possible. And, and to the extent that we have to have some scholarships, you know, that's what we're fundraising for to um, we'll cover it. We'll, we'll have no trouble um, getting people to help cover scholarships as well. And how long, how, how many days does this kind of camp last? I mean, and again, I don't know if the beta was representative. No, the, the beta, room. the beta is, it's just like in software, you know, if you have the beta, you know, it's almost done. It's just some features need some tweaking. This app camp 1.0, which is, I guess, what we're going to call it. I've been kicking around names like, do we call it app camp gold master? Or do we call it app camp, you know, release candidate? Um, uh, but I think 1.0 is the right, uh, app camp 1.0 is one week like um, beta camp was and we've already learned things we would do differently with the program and the schedule what girls want more of xcode what they want less of storyboarding uh, what they, <laughs> uh, they want to go on a field trip i'm already organizing that and um the uh but that's minor compared to how much went right last that la that during that week it was uh, overall, I, I mean, you know, I'm not really one to uh, to get into hyperboles, but we, I think we hit it out of the park with that group. It was incredible. It sounds like, I mean, it, you got coverage of all kinds. You've you've got great responses from the girls themselves, and sure, there are always going to be things that they want that you know you maybe you can do, maybe you can't do, but you know you advance it. So that's very good. That's very good. And when will the first, the, excuse me, App Camp for Girls 1.0 happen? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's August 19th to the 23rd. Great. And um, it's essentially full already. I mean, I have so many applications right now, and we're um, it's going to be a small group again. Um, I mean, the space is not that big. And um, I wish we could do more sooner because – it, it does break my heart to think about all these girls who would get so much out of this week that we can't really work with because, you know, you, you, we're just too small right now. And, and having the fundraiser, you know, to be able to support rolling this out, getting more volunteers, getting it into more cities, you know, around the country and also the world. I mean, definitely App Camp can go anywhere. Um, that's that's what really motivates us right right now. Uh, we, I mean, I expected people to like the idea, but I didn't expect what we got. I didn't. I am still pretty much bowled over by the the enthusiasm that we've seen from every quarter. So, well, it's it, you know, there's so many great causes out there, and it seems like everywhere you turn, someone's asking you to donate to this or donate to that. This one, I think, is is an investment in the future. It's not just a donation. Uh, it's an investment in the future of, of technology. It's an investment in the, in the future of the community we all love. Um, it just I can't I can't in, recommend and in, endorse it enthusiastically enough. Uh, and I, I hope everyone will go as long as the Indie Pro, Indiegogo project is on. Go donate, help Jean get to that 100000 that she's looking for. And if whether they make it or not, you know, call her later and say, hey, I've got a MacBook Pro 15 or, you know, just buy one on Amazon and send it to her. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'm totally trolling the refurb section of the Apple store now. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. You know, there are a lot of ways, folks, a lot of ways you can help out with this project. So please do. Gene Kelly, thank you so much for being here and for uh, for talking about this. Again, it's it's a super enthusiast. I'm, I'm super enthusiastic about it. I'm only sorry that we're getting to you just with a few days to go, but you guys have been busy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been too crazy. The whole thing has been crazy busy, and um, you know, everybody who has experience in this kind of fundraising tells me that the last week is the most important week, anyway. So I, I'm, you know. 
I'm glad we got to talk because you and I haven't had a chance to talk hardly at all. Yeah, I know. I, I passed you at WWDC for a little like, while. and You did look like you were in a daze, and now I understand why because like 50000 <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we had hoped to have enough money, like maybe ten or or 15000 so that when we went to WWDC, there would be – enough in there that people would take it seriously as a thing. Um, this is really a deal. Like we have $10,000 already. We're only trying to get to 50. We have 20, you know, like we were at the point where we were like, it would be so awesome if we had half our money before WWDC, that would be just phenomenal. And it would really give us a, a way to, to leverage this to people. Like we're already half funded. We're in the home stretch. And then it was three days. <laughs> and so like, so that was an, another big piece of it, I think, was because like every piece along the way has been something has completely gone in our favor, whatever it was. Um, you know, everything from last summer, um, Jean getting a hold of a friend of hers and saying, hey, awesome graphic designer, can you build us a logo for way less than your going rate? And she said, OK. And running into Natalie and having the opportunity to meet these people and talk to those folks and being able to source out the MacBooks, we, the MacBook Pros we did yeah. get. And yeah. like every piece along the way has been there has been something there that was like, yes, this is the universe telling you, you are on to something awesome. <laughs> and we really need to make sure that this turns into yeah. a thing. And like every, every step along the way, there's been something. And I have just been, I've been floored, but then also extra pleased because the community drum is one that I am hitting on a regular basis. So I always say there's no community like the Apple community, the Mac support people, the iPhone support, like, as a group, these are people that love to get together and hang out and help each other with what they're doing. And, and for me to have been saying that, like, I remember saying it vividly, um, at Macworld, like 2011 or 2000, like 2011 and, and saying that that's the thing that I love the most about Macworld is getting to hang out with the community. And so for that community to really rally around this as a cause to me has just been extra gratifying because it's the thing that I've been saying all along and now I have proof. <laughs> well, it, it, it is, and the, the whole the whole Apple community, it, it, whether whether it's the developer aspect, whether it's the user aspect, the user group aspect, there's so many different factions, but there's just this common identity that I think we all have, and and as a subset, and then you move up a little bit into just the I, what was the what was the app gene that they built the the geek <laughs> you, you the. You were the, you were a nerd penguin. What, penguin yeah, nerdy penguins. Nerdy penguins. Yeah. Yes, you know we're, yeah. we're all nerdy penguins. Yeah, we're all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I've never been Josh. called a nerdy penguin before, Gene. That's well, I'll, I'll I'll get you the app and you can take the quiz and you, maybe you have a chance of being a sporty penguin. But I I know you're not a lazy penguin and I'm pretty sure you're not a diva penguin. So. <laughs> I was going to strike a pose there, but I won't. No. Just... Oh. <laughs> but, uh, no. I mean. But if someone I'm... donates $200 to App Camp, he totally will. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly. Cool. Kelly will sell anything at this I, point. I can tell, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, we may have to edit out what she's going to sell next. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> no, I'll be good. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, no, I, I, go to App Camp for Girls. Check it out. Go to the Indiegogo page. Um, I'll have links right here or, or or graphics or something so you can find it easily and please 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 support this project gene uh, you you will be back uh, off sabbatical with smile sometime in the near future september. i guess september yes. yeah and um yeah i mean i just can't say enough about how supportive the whole smile team has been maya from smile came up and worked the whole week and she was a team leader too <laughs> Um, so she had, she was basically a camp counselor for a week, which I don't think she was uh, uh, aware that that's what we were going to sign her. To. <laughs> hey, <laughs> but she was great. Sure. Um, and then of course Philip and Greg um, helping me out by, I mean, not just making donations, which have been substantial, but making the commitment to uh, take over my responsibilities so that I could focus on app camp this summer when I said to them, you know, I think it's not going to happen if I don't focus on it full time to get it off the ground. And, um, 
you know, so Smile really is the major sponsor of App Camp. Like, we don't plaster the Smile logo over everything, but it, we should. <laughs> yeah. It's really been incredible. Well, that's not exactly a surprise, Gene, but I'm, you know, it's <laughs> it's a tribute to the kind of team you have and, and the way they participate. And Kelly, you just, and I was, I said it at the top of the show, and if people aren't familiar with you, they probably thought I was being nasty or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you really are the, the newest Angry Mac Bastard. You, uh, the I Angry really Mac Bastard podcast, um, that mm -hmm. you're now full time official, you know, bastard. You, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's I the real not, deal, I and I'm okay that. with that. Yeah. I can say that. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I know she's not. Yeah, you have a secret handshake and all, right? Mm <laughs> That's great. I do indeed. It's it's hard to fill Peter's shoes, but um, I'm sort of not actually and kind of doing my own instead of just coming on and yelling all of Peter's catchphrases in my voice. So um, <laughs> it's only been a couple of episodes, and actually when we're done here, I'm going to go record that. So um, it's been fun, and uh, there have been a couple of people on Twitter who have said that even – with only two episodes under my belt that have been released, uh, it's already time to create the Kelly Gamont soundboard for AMB. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But uh, so far, it's it's really been a lot of fun, and it's I'm always excited to do a podcast with people who are smart and funny, and those guys are smart and funny, and and I'm always excited every time I get to hang out with them. So yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's fitting that they they de you know they they. Um, what's the word that now they have a woman on what would you would assume is an all male podcast and what has been, <laughs> um, and you know, just at the time, in fact, the, you know, there was during camp, Kelly recorded the first episode as an official AMB, um, host. And, uh, I think, you know, it seems like the universe is saying we need more women everywhere, even on angry Mac bastards. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did record it from <laughs> Yeah, and I recorded that first official episode from the chair that Jean is sitting in right now. Yes. Because we were on our way to somewhere else, and she said, you can come record here if you want to, and then we can go do, and I, oh, okay, that'll be great. So, yeah. that was how it happened. Jean, you took the, the thoughts right out of my mouth, you know, that uh, out of my head that, you know, th there is, it's like Kelly sa said, so the universe is trying to tell us something here. Um, <laughs> so, I, I hope we all get the message. Uh, ladies, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations, and please keep up the good work. It's it's very important work, and it's also, I think, it sounds like a lot of fun, too. It's super fun. It's a lot of fun. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. App Camp for Girls is the talk of the Mac community, definitely. Please visit the Indiegogo page. Join, donate, get involved. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, app.net, Google+, Facebook, and for more Apple, Mac, and tech-related shows, including Mac Voices, Mac Notables, the Mac Jury, and the Mac Voices Briefing. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com.